What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name is Michael Roman, aka Allfires. Now this past weekend at D23, they showed those of us in the room a ton of first look exclusive footage and trailers. And before you guys jump in the comments, I know this frustrates some of you. I read the comments over the weekend at the channel. Just keep in mind, in the case of a lot of these projects, the VFX are not done. The projects themselves aren't done. And say the case of the Marvels, they don't come out until next summer. And Marvel still wants to market what's right in front of us. Five episodes of She-Hulk, Werewolf by Night, Black Black Panther Wakanda Forever and Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. So there is a ton of Marvel for them to focus on, but we need to break down those trailers and footage one by one. We're going to start today with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, and there were so many reveals in the extended footage that they showed, the interaction between Kang and Ant-Man, letting us know what exactly the main point of this movie is. We now know the main plot device. It definitely asks some more questions on top. We got an amazing reveal, however, of Kang's power set. I'm going to talk about exactly what happened in the trailer, the dialogue, the major reveals setting up, how this whole film goes down, and what Kang is actually after, and talk about what he did to Ant-Man at the end of that trailer, what his power set looks like, and what might actually be going on there. We're breaking down the entirety of the first look footage for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, but first, if you could grab the subscribe button, we do daily Marvel content at the channel, and that's all we do. Everything from official Easter egg breakdowns, trailers, and reviews, to the occasional industry insider report and everything in between. So, if that sort of thing's for you, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, that will automatically enter you to win our ongoing PS5 giveaway, which we are right around the corner from the next one and should easily hit by day's end. So, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, stick around to the end of the video, we'll get into the giveaway stuff again there. Okay, so the trailer opens up with Scott Lang driving, he's got Hope riding shotgun and Cassie in the back seat. Hope says, how about some music and turns on the radio only to hear that Scott has been listening to his own book that he released a book on tape with him narrating. You hear Scott's voice say back to them, quote, and in that moment, all I could think was, how did the Hulk turn me into a baby? Am I Hulk's baby? From the backseat, Cassie says, are you listening to your own book? And Scott says, no, it's the radio. She goes, oh my God, no. And he says, what's that? Turn it up. Then we get a montage of Scott basically talking about how good his life is. Scott, you're an ex-con. How are you an Avenger now? This doesn't make sense. A lot has changed in my life. Well, there's Cassie and everywhere I go, people telling me the same thing. And then you hear someone from behind a coffee counter go, Thank you, Spider-Man, in the coffee shop. He doesn't even bother to correct him. Now, at the end of this montage of Ant-Man telling you how good things have been, you know it's not going to stay that way. And that's when we pick up on a scene where Cassie's explaining to her father, which, by the way, she's got a suit now. She is full on stature. So if there were any question about the Young Avengers incoming, uh, it seems as though the whole team has gathered at this point. She's explaining to Scott that... While he was gone for five years, she got really interested in the quantum realm and has since been working with Hank, who defends him himself and says, hey, she was interested, she was asking questions, I can't stop that. Janet intersects and says, why didn't you ask me? And Cassie says, you never wanted to talk about it. That's when they all go into the basement and Cassie shows Scott that she's been working on being able to send a signal into the quantum realm and remarks that if they had had this device, she would have been able to save her dad. He seems impressed for just a moment, but that's when Janet Van Dyne looks extremely, extremely concerned and remarks, you're sending a signal into the quantum realm, turn it off. She doesn't get two more turn it offs out before the whole thing goes haywire and there is an enormous emission of what looks like a blue energy explosion that happens twice in the room, basically opening up a portal and it really reminded me, even though I only got one look at it and can't see it again, it really reminded me sort of of what happened in the first uh, Avengers film with the way the portal opened for Loki, something similar. It then sucks all of them in the room into it, presumably the quantum realm. And while Scott looks like he's able to hang on and avoid getting sucked into the portal, it looks like since the rest of his family has now been sucked in, he lets go, gets sucked in as well, and the portal closes. The next part of the trailer is very similar to what they showed during San Diego Comic-Con, except the next part involving Kang is much, much different, so we're going to jump to that. But quickly, in this montage, you hear Cassie asks, where are we? They're in the quantum realm. You do get to see Bill Murray, who's playing Krylar. You do get a first shot of MODOK, who is indeed wearing a golden mask. It's the last part of the trailer, though, that is completely different and now sets up the plot device for what's going on. It starts where you hear Scott say, you've made a big mistake, I'm an Avenger. King then asks, you're an Avenger? Have I killed you before? And Scott says, what? He says, they all start to blur together after a while. To which Scott asks, who are you? And he responds, I'm just a man who's lost a lot of time like you, but we can help each other with that. Somebody stole something from me and you're the only one who can help me get it back. Now he has Cassie already captured 
in a cage over his left shoulder and Cassie basically is giving Scott the hell no, shaking her head, don't do it. So Scott replies, no, I don't think we do. It's then that Kang simply raises his hand and holds his fingers together, exerting absolutely no effort and not moving at all, and pins Scott up against the wall upside down with force into the rock. So real talk here as far as power set and what's going on, Kang seems totally OP. Now if you're wondering, is he telekinetic of any kind? Kang has a vast, vast power set that's based on very super advanced technology, and one of the powers of his technology is to control other forms of technology. So I'm guessing whatever it is about Ant-Man's suit that's interacting with the quantum realm, the part of the control that he has over that suit is because they're basically in his domain. What I will also say though, is that there is a reason that they need Scott to help him capture something back. And the two definite questions here are number one, why is it 616 Scott Lang? Why is it Scott Lang in the first place? Number two, when he says, I've lost something, but you're the only person who can help me get it back, what is he referring to? Well, I think that comes into play with our own 616 continuity and the storyline that we know. What we know is that one of the branches from the 616 and Loki is what ended up killing He Who Remains, the one who was controlling this main timeline in the first place. So for me, I think it's definitely intrinsically tied into the importance of the 616 timeline being what led to this in the first place. The second thing is though, is you don't do this sort of crazy stuff unless it's for love, and that leaves one of two options. Obviously from the comics, Ravona Renslayer is his love interest, and we've already seen from what Wanda did in our own continuity, after she lost her kids, she was willing to travel the multiverse to try to find variants to fill that hole. It could be that he lost his own Ravona, that what was stolen from him, and so now he's going after the one that's at the TVA right now. But also it could be Janet Van Dyne, she's the one who could have escaped him, and that would be the unique part of this and why he drew them all back. And this would explain earlier in the trailer when Janet Van Dyne is so concerned about them sending a signal back to the quantum realm, that would be letting him know exactly where she is that specific variant of king that was in the quantum realm where she was not another variant so it actually would be all very specific to the players in this film that's why i think there's at least a little bit of a chance here that janet van dyne is going to have some history romantically or not with king and know about him that's why she was scared about them sending the signal that's what's specific about him needing quote unquote to get it back Maybe it's Janet, maybe Janet stole something, but I think that that's how they make this specific because again, we have waded into territory here that is very Rick and Morty-esque and in a genre that already gets accused of not having consequences, when you get to infinite universes and infinite replaces for infinite characters, then it starts to become very dangerously a place where nothing matters at all. So how Marvel chooses to do this means the best way to do it is keep it intrinsic to the characters we know, that way we don't end up following characters we don't. However, I will point out that we all sort of jumped on the bandwagon with that Loki variant super fast and how many of you feel like the Loki we watched in Loki Season 1 was the Loki we followed through the Infinity Saga? Because it's not, but we all feel that way, right? Ah, just throwing that out there, let me know all your thoughts down in the comments. Quickly, let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. Okay, we are giving away PlayStation 5s every 20,000 subscribers all the way up to a million. We're literally 300 subscribers from 980. That's when the next one hits. Could easily be tonight or tomorrow this week. If you want to be entered to win, all the same rules will apply for giveaways here at the channel. Hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below because it's truly random. The more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners will be announced at the end of videos the same way we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. And as always, if if you liked today's video, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. My name's Michael Roman. You can find me in a couple of places, Instagram and Twitter at I'm Fires. You can also find me on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, Apple, iTunes with original music under All Fires and Wide. Sincerely appreciate you checking that out. Stay tuned at the channel. I have a ton of more footage to break down for you guys. Should have had the next one up by this afternoon or tomorrow morning. All right. I love y'all. See you in the next one. Peace.